So that is the riff from Nas's The World Is Yours, sampled from the Ahmed Jamal Trio's I Love Music. Really recommend looking up the original recording that this is sampled from. It's this amazing seven minute jazz piano track where Ahmed Jamal is like taking these chords and then playing them all over the keyboard in different keys and with tons and tons of different variations. So like the opening goes. So it's an incredible track. This sample comes from just before about five minutes into the seven minute track. So as with all of the videos in this series, uh, covering every riff from Illmatic, if you click the link below this video, you can download a free PDF for the score. And that's the easiest way to learn the riff. Otherwise, I'm going to spend the rest of this video just talking about the chords and how they work. So um, we'll just go through them one by one. This is the opening chord. And that's fairly straightforward to analyze. A minor triad in the right hand, but with a D in the bass. So we'd write that A minor over D. Okay, the next chord is a bit more complicated, especially when you add that A sharp. We're gonna skip that chord for now, but come back to it later. But after that, we go back to the original chord, A minor over D. Then we have B minor, over E, B minor triad in the right hand, but with an E in the bass. Then we have another minor triad in the right hand, D minor in the right hand, with a G in the bass. Then the left hand plays an arpeggio, but the notes you're adding in the left hand are exactly the same as you have in the right hand. So D minor triad doesn't change the harmony. Then on the right hand, you're just going down a D minor scale in thirds. So um, let us look again at these three chords. Again, we're skipping this one for the time being. Let's just look at these. And as I've said in other videos, you always want to analyze chords relative to the root, uh, in this case, the bass note. So you want to analyze them from the bottom up rather than from the top down. So let's do that with this chord. Um, let's move this D up an octave to make it easier to see what's going on. And let's analyze this A minor triad relative to the bass note. So the bass note's D, and relative to D, A is a fifth above the root. So the way we're constructing this chord is we're starting with the bass note D, going up a fifth to A, and then building a minor triad on that A. That's the first chord. Then this chord is in fact constructed exactly the same way. Start with the bass note E, go up a fifth to B, and then you build a minor triad on that B. So again, E, up a fifth to B, and build a minor triad on that B. So just moving those bass notes up an octave. Then the last chord was this. Again, let's move those notes closer together to make it easier to see what's going on. And here we have a bass note G. Again, if we go up a fifth, it takes us to D, and then we build a minor triad on that D. So actually, out of these three chords, um, they're actually exactly the same chord, just transposed around the keyboard. Start with the bass note, go up a fifth, and then build a minor triad on that fifth. We can analyze them a step further. So instead of now seeing this as an A minor triad, let's work out how each of these individual notes relate to the root of the chord. So this, this might be overkill for some people. This is obviously for those of you who want to, I don't know, compose your own, own riffs and own samples. So relative to the root, we have D, the A is a fifth. And then the easiest way to analyze these two notes is to notice that they're either side of the octave. So that's the octave, that's the root there. Tone less than an octave is a seventh, and a tone up from an octave is a ninth. So that's the seventh and ninth of the chord. So we have root, fifth, seventh, ninth. So it's kind of like a, like a D minor nine chord or just a D nine chord, but without the third. So by itself, you don't know whether it's major or minor. You just have the fifth, seventh and ninth. And that kind of ambiguity, not knowing if these chords are major or minor, I think is, is a lot of what gives this track its sort of floating feeling. It's a little bit ambiguous. 
So that's three out of the four chords. Let's go back to this one, which is a bit harder. So let's move that C sharp up an octave. We have four notes, it's pretty dissonant. Let's drop this C for a moment and just look at these three notes. Well, that's actually just a C sharp minor triad with the third up an octave. So that's C sharp minor. Now, how do we fit in this C? This C is a semitone less than the octave, so that's a major seventh. So that's C sharp minor, C sharp minor with a major seventh. It's pretty dissonant. And the third is at the top. Root, fifth, major seventh, third. And then in this particular sample we have, we add an A sharp, uh, yeah, there's an A sharp, A sharp on the right hand. I'm getting confused with my sharps and flats. So that A sharp is a tone above the fifth. That's root fifth. So that's a major sixth. So we have C sharp with a major seventh, and then we're also adding a major sixth. So it's kind of a minor triad with a major sixth and major seventh on it. Kind of quite a cool sound. Incidentally, the, if we take these four notes in the right hand, they're all part of a whole tone scale. And this is outside of the whole tone scale, so it produces quite a dissonant sound. Anyway, it's a jazz piano track that this thing is sampling from, so naturally the harmonies are kind of complicated. And when you put them all together, they sound like this. <laughs> 